So this is a quick tutorial on how to integrate the Reality XP GTN 750 or 650 product into pre-existing Garmin 530 or 430 displays on default as well as multiple payware X-Plane 11 aircraft. It's going to be using the King AC-90 which is one of the default aircraft for this project. So we have a 530 and a 430 equipped here, both of which are the default X-Plane 11 GPS units. First thing uh, in the process is to uh, establish exactly where in the uh, 3D panel this position actually is to uh, replace the uh, screen. So coming up to uh, the keyboard bindings, I uh, started a search here for panel screenshot, looking for uh, this particular option here, make screenshot of your panels. Uh, for myself, it's uh, shift control space. I do have my binding set to FSX uh, Just for uh, parity across uh, the two platforms. I do believe the X-Plane 11 default is shift control alt space I'll be uh, leaving mine as it is there uh, for the purposes of this video So by pressing the uh, relevant uh, combination you have assigned to that command takes a screenshot of all the gauges uh, within the 3D panel range and dumps it into the aircraft folder. So from the X-Plane 11 root folder, uh, going to go into aircraft, laminar research for uh, default aircraft, the King Air C-90. Uh, once you're in the appropriate aircraft, cockpit 3D, and inside there is a panels folder. We're just taking this image here, panel preview. So I'm going to open that with uh, Microsoft Paint and uh, use that to establish the position. So the bottom left of Microsoft Paint down here gives the uh, relative position of the cursor on the uh, canvas. They're all 1024 by 1024. Top left, uh, nice easy one to calculate, it's 00, zero so we uh, don't really need to uh, calculate that. If I was uh, replacing the 430 as an example, uh, appears to be sitting about there, so we'd be looking about 0, 3, 388, 3, 8, 3, 8, 8, I'd probably go with, so 0, 3, 8, 8. We're doing the 530 here, however, so 0, 0, so I'm going to come across and make a note of the top left coordinate, so 0, 0. Bottom right is the next number we require. Just kill the drone from the background there. So the bottom right for uh, the panel 530. I'll zoom this in to make it a bit more accurate. So the bottom right is going to be probably that pixel there. 520, 52382 looks reasonable to me. So I'll uh, note that down as well. 520 by 382. Start with the width and the height. This is uh, going to be uh, extremely easy for us to calculate in this scenario. So the width is the x-axis here, uh, 520 being the bottom right, minus the uh, top left position. 520 minus 0 is obviously going to be 520. Same with the height, 382 minus 0, obviously that'll be 382. Now we need to determine the actual position of the uh, the gauge itself. So the top left position, uh, the left axis uh, commences at zero. We're in the uh, far left hand side, so it's going to be the uh, same up here as zero. It's always going to be the same number that we've determined here if the gauge that uh, you're replacing is somewhere else in the, uh, the uh, panel. The top position is inverse to uh, the number that uh, we gather out of uh, Microsoft Paint. So it would actually be 1024 and then subtract whichever value you've determined for uh, Y. In this case, 
uh, it's going to be 0, so 1024. So the numbers that we would use for the Garmin 530 replacement in the uh, GTN file is going to be 0, 1024, 520, 382. I'm just going to take a note of those values and uh, paste these over here. For the purposes of the uh, exercise, we'll now uh, repeat, except this time just to uh, do uh, an example, I'm going to uh, use the HSI down here, just for the purposes of the mathematic to uh, ensure that that's uh, nice and clear when zeros aren't involved. So it's not a uh, extremely defined line here, it's uh, just gauging by the uh, minute changes in the black, it looks like the uh, gauge commences approximately there, so 343 and 771. So 343, 771 go into our top left bracket bottom right for this particular gauge. Uh, again, it's not quite on the bottom, so this will be good uh, exercise here. I'm going to call it uh, approximately there, so 573 by 991. So I'll clear these values out. So we'll start with our width and our height because they're basic math, so 573 minus 343 gives us a uh, width of 230. The height of this gauge is going to be 991 minus 771, which is uh, 220. Top left, always going to be the same value as the uh, top left x, so 343. And the y being the inverse is going to be 1024 minus our 771 gives us 253. So if we were going to be placing it in the location of this EHSI, the uh, coordinates would use uh, 343, 253 for the uh, top left corner, has a width of 230 and a height of 220. So now that we've uh, established where the gauge needs to go, we'll come back into X-Plane. Wait for the uh, GTN plug-in, the GTN1 that I'm going to initialize as a GTN 750. Having done this, it should now generate a file in the King Air C90. Down the bottom here, realityxp.gtn, and that'll be a, a .cfg file if you uh, have extensions turned on. So we want to edit this file here. I'm going to close X-Plane now because we'll need to reload that aircraft once we're uh, finished. Okay, so now that we have our configuration file uh, initialized, we're uh, going to just use the one GTN 750, so there's only one instance of the gauge. This is that one instance. We need to draw it to the window, and we're going to uh, rename down uh, further in the document to uh, the standard syntax for uh, X-Plane 11, so it's the Garmin 530 screen that we're going to render this to. It's the master device, the co-pilot, well, we're not really going to have a co-pilot, it'll be a ComNav1. Uh, we wish it to uh, use the simulated time, so that'll be false. Uh, we'll skip over the uh, lighting options there. Connect the GPS to the autopilot, yes we want to do that. Connect it to the HSI, yes we want to do that. Whoops. Uh, connect the HSI torque motor, that would be a fantastic idea if we wish to not have to change the CDI every time we change a, onto a new course. Uh, the course motor may not necessarily be uh, available depending on uh, the actual aircraft itself, but we'll set it to true and see what happens. Uh, connect the GPS to the OBS input. Yes, we would like it to do that. Uh, so that'll enable the uh, OBS switch on uh, the front of the 530. Connect it to the VOR, no. Uh, the CDI key, yes, we want it to be able to do that as well. Uh, VLOC nav 1, 2 or 0, which is auto, we've already assigned it to radio pair com nav 1, so 0 auto is appropriate. Uh, we'll let it use shaden and uh, fuel data 
uh, so we don't have to enter any of that type of stuff when the uh, GDN initializes. Uh, we'll use the audio panel, the transponder, we're going to use the uh, TCAS and uh, we're going to skip over the uh, default section or sorry the, the default values for the uh, traffic simulation these are the uh, commands down here that we definitely want to check so user simulator gps commands yes we want it to use the default simulator commands that'll give us the uh, sum of the functionality such as the direct two key on the Garmin 530 bezel will work for the GTN 750. Realistically speaking that's really the only button that we actually have on a GTN 750 so important to change that one. Uh, update the simulated GPS flight plan in this case we have a 430 so yes we need it to update that so the 430 can receive data and uh, we may as well just make it a uh, flight plan as well while we're at it. Uh, coming down the other options, uh, we'll leave it on the avionics bus. Avgas in a C90, not a great idea. We'll change that to Jet A. And then skip over the tools data. That can all stay at default. And uh, now we move into the rendering options. So this is the pop-up window. Uh, display the window. Mm, no, we don't really need the pop-up straight off the bat, so that can be false. Uh, we'll leave that location as is. And come down to the uh, important one. So GDN 750.1 panels. Now we've already decided we're going to call that the same as X-Plane. So it's the Garmin 530 screen that we're replacing. Display window. Well, obviously, yes, we want to display it. Show screen only gauge. Now that we need as true. The way X-Plane 11 works, in order to get the bezel from the GDN 750 into the 3D cockpit, we would need to physically add that through a uh, 3D editor such as uh, Blender, which uh, I don't have a clue how that thing works. So I'm going to skip that and move on to uh, the display type being panel 3D. The position, so we established that earlier up here, so I copied the uh, 530 position into uh, that section. So the top left is going to be zero. Uh, sorry, the left position is zero. The top of it is inverse to paint, so it's 1024. has a height of 520, sorry, a width of 520 and a height of 382. And uh, we'll leave the rest of it in, uh, in default, so we don't want to have any uh, border to it. It's going to be a black background, so it blends in. Uh, mouse click spot, so it's a touch screen, so that'll be true. And uh, then we'll just skip straight to the X Plane 11 one right mouse button on the screen toggles pop up. Well, that's kind of handy, so that can be true. So that's our uh, GTN 750 configured, so we'll save that. And uh, now we'll reopen X Plane 11, and uh, it should now replace the. No, since C90 is just finishing loading now. We seem to have success, so the Garmin GTN 750.